I'm on. Yeah, ball again. Wow. Oh my god. Yeah. Dude, like it went, it like got got tight, and I let it, I just let let it there, and it went, oh my gosh, I was like crawling over a rock, and I stopped it, and it went. Oh. Every single cast with the big bait is, you're literally swinging for the fence on every cast. But after years and years and, and thousands, hundreds of thousands of casts of not catching a single thing, um, you really start to dial in those little angles. And angles are everything with swim bait fishing. It's gotta look real, it's gotta be real. That 10 year old fish has got to be 100% convinced that that big giant piece of plastic is the real deal. If you're swinging all day long, it's easy to lose focus. So you really have to treat every single cast like you're gonna catch a 10 pounder. Because when that fish actually bites, you have to be ready for it. So many guys make mistakes of, you know, reeling it too fast and you just simply don't get the bites if it's not in that strike zone, if it's not in that area where that giant fish lives for extended periods of time. It's gotta look real down there. So with every turn of that hand, every time you're just reeling in slowly and slowly and slowly, and the clock is ticking and ticking on, you know, on that tournament clock, you just gotta tell yourself the very next cast could be the one. Swim baits are just a tool. Uh, the faster you realize that, the more beneficial they'll be to you. There's no excuses, Johnny. I mean, I can see plenty good with this. Legit follower again. Wow. So no more talking and more doing. Alright, Johnny. Damn, dude. Oh my gosh, that's a tank. Please bite. Oh my gosh, I got hammered, dude. Come on, Huddleston. Hang in there, Johnny. Hang in there. Swim bait fishing has become uh, a lifestyle. It, it really has. I'm always about the highest quality possible, the biggest fish possible. I mean, that's what it's all about right there is challenging yourself saying, hey, I've never thrown a lure this big before. And going out and failing with it, you know, not catching a single fish on a Monday, but going back on Tuesday and getting that one six, seven, eight pound bite. That's what it's all about. What is a swim bait? To me, it's not a game of inches. Um, it's not a style of a tail or how many joints a bait has. A swim bait to me is successfully imitating the biggest bait fish in your body of water. When you're a, just an elite fish, a giant point hogging bully, you eat larger than normal things. And that's, what's, that's what a swim bait is. It's everything all at once. Right now, I'm gonna eat this thing and go about my day. It's really a, a diverse time in, um, in swim bait fishing. You got your wedge tails. You've got boot tails. You've got glide baits. You've got crank downs. You've got multi-jointed swim baits. The ever so evolving swim bait profile and technique um, will continue to evolve 
and, uh, and continue to catch larger than normal fish is a three inch saucy swimmer a swim bait? Technically, yes. But you're imitating a threadfin shad. Where that, where that threadfin shad lives, gizzard shad live. So to me, a, the definition of a swim bait is imitating that trout, that gizzard shad, that baby carp, that baby bass, the biggest forage in that fishery. Back in my early years, you know, throwing the big, the big plastic, it was a cool thing to do. Uh, in the early 2000s, I mean, there were only a few guys throwing it uh, in Northern California. Uh, we were kind of following the lead of those SoCal boys, uh, but you know, it was the cool thing to do back then. It, it really was. You know, I was getting tired of the the jig flipping on the Delta. I wanted something new. You control the controllables uh, with bass fishing, with lure selection. Um, you can't make a fish bite your lure. Um, you could only be in the mental headspace uh, and prepare yourself for that fish to bite this giant piece of plastic. It's risky, but it's a calculated risk. There's this whole culture of swim bait fishermen. They're from all over the country. A lot of them are from Southern California. You've got a bunch of Northern California. There's these little underground groups in Texas. All those musky guys up North have dipped into the, the five and six pound largemouth. Um, there's this society of big bait throwers who are all committed just just to get that one bite i mean there's something special about that whole process selecting the swim bait challenging yourself as an angler knowing you're not going to get the the bites uh going for the quality and not the the quantity those guys have got it figured out for those watching and listening um once you get that bite, that first bite on a true swim bait, uh, it is so addicting because every single time when they bite it, they mean it. And it's never a, man, did that fish just bite my swim bait? Maybe, maybe I should set the hook. I mean, they absolutely <laughs> every single time. And that's addicting. Gosh, it doesn't feel that big. Oh my gosh, dude, it's a small mouth. Look at this small mouth, dude. Oh! <laughs> Absolutely crushed it, man. Oh, dude, you make 120 casts, and on the 121st cast, surprise smallmouth on a big swimmer. That is awesome. Keep casting and casting and casting and casting, and all of a sudden you're rewarded. Not the green one we're looking for, but a very, very nice brown fish. And in this part of the country, that is an absolute tank. I think about, you know, what has taught me more about general bass fishing, general uh, bass behavior. Is it throwing swim baits or conventional tackle? Crankbaits, spinnerbaits, jigs, worms, um, top water, or those swim baits. And I can honestly say, um, since I first started fishing them in 1999 or 2000, um, Throwing swim baits has taught me more about bass behavior than any of those general tackle selections, uh, lure selections, uh, period. I feel like I learn more about bass behavior when I'm not getting the bites, uh, opposed to when I am getting the bites. It's those days where you know the fish are there, you can see them on your electronics, you know um, the history of that lake or that fishery. When you're throwing big lures at them and they're not biting it, you ask yourself why. And when you ask yourself why, it really gets you hyper-focused, hyper-sensitive to the little things like angles, like retrieval speed, Slow creep it on the bottom. Colors. Those negative clues of not getting a bite and not getting a bite and not getting a bite tells you, okay, let's not do this next time or let's not do this on the next cast. By the end of the day, throw in big swim baits. Um, you're so in tune with what needs to be done to get a bite. Oof. Gosh, dude, 
there was an underwater tree and I saw two fish in it and I let that thing fall down and it went like this and then it followed it and then went right back down. Oh my God, dude, did you see that? Dude, like it went, it like got, it got tight and I let it, I just let, let it there and just went, Poof! big old blob, went like this again and then right down to the ledge. I got a little bit deeper and kind of surprise him uphill. I had so much line out on that one. I could, I could tell that my line was on the bottom. So as I was reeling it in, the swim bait was literally like pulling down into it. Like you could tell, like the line was so heavy. There's no other lure in my opinion that has the drawing power um, like a swim bait. Drawing power is simply, you know, getting that fish off its fat butt to chase down something worth its while. Profile, color, sound, vibration, all those things combined in a swim bait package is drawing power. We're talking about six plus pound fish here generally. That's a big, fat, lazy fish. When you throw that big, giant profile in that clearer water, that drawing power, 12, 15, 20, sometimes 30 feet, that fish will swim out just to get that giant profile. So, you know, when someone says, oh, you're tying that giant shoe on and you know, you, you're gonna catch the biggest fish in the lake, it's not really about that. Again, it's about imitating that biggest forage in the lake. And once you understand that, you've got a leg up on the competition. You've got a leg up on the rest of the guys throwing larger than normal baits. This one looks good. Got him, big one, giant. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, oh. come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, yeah. Whoo, that's a big swim bait fish. That was awesome. Oh my gosh, dude. That's the thing about swim bait fishing right there. Johnny and I have been out like four days in a row here in Texas, cooling water temperatures. It only takes that one cast right there and that one giant fish to make your week, man. That was awesome. I get bored of conventional lures, man. I really do. Uh, fishing all these years and competing all these years on tour. Um, it's just like a relationship, right? You gotta, you gotta keep that, that spark alive. And uh, if you're not challenge, challenging yourself every single day on the water, uh, in any form, whatever lure selection, but for me, it's swim bait fishing. It goes stale and you get bored, believe it or not, you get bored of fishing, or I've gotten bored of fishing. Um, so I always like to broaden my uh, swim bait approach. Uh, brought in my swim bait selection. I'm constantly learning from those boys out in California. You know, those golden shiner guys down in Florida. I'm constantly trying to learn and apply those new techniques and swim baits just to keep it fresh. It's not as complicating uh, as you would think. I grew up fishing a seven and a half foot flipping stick, 20 pound test monofilament and an Osprey swim bait or a Huddleston swim bait and just throwing it and just trying to learn and trying to get that positive and negative feedback and know what to do and what not to do. Yes, be prepared when that 10 pounder bites. You don't want any heartbreaks with, with equipment, but it doesn't have to be, um, you know, that out of this world. Swim baits work from California to Florida, up to New York, all the way back down to South Texas. If you're not familiar with this lifestyle, if you haven't tasted this lifestyle, um, it's a really rewarding place to be when things go right, when you start to learn the nuances, you start to learn the ins and outs, what to do, what not to do, what lures work really well, what swim baits don't work really well. When you figure all that out, it's a, just a giant journey. And when you start to get to the top of that journey, you really get right knocked right back down and, and humbled uh, with all the attempts of trying and trying to catch this trophy fish. But one thing's for certain, again, when you get that first bite, it's the start of an obsession. It's the start of a lifestyle of swim baiting. And I encourage every bass fisherman that's ever picked up a bass rod to at least try to imitate 
the largest forage, the largest bait fish in your lake and really try to go for those trophy fish with the swim bait because I know you'll be just addicted as me.